Hey guys, what I'd like to do today is talk about a bizarre, a strange, frustrating issue that I have with the NVIDIA driver for my NVIDIA GPU, my 1390. This is the first time that I faced this issue myself, but I suspect this is something that a lot of people are tackling on a daily basis. And it's all about the fact that NVIDIA don't roll out one GPU driver anymore. They roll out two. They have a driver for studio apps, like video editing apps, like DaVinci Resolve, like what I use and Premiere Pro, etc. But they also have their game ready driver, which is optimized for games and ensures that your games run well. And most of the, you know, AAA games are, have all been optimized for it. Now, before I kind of circle back to that, I want to talk about NVIDIA GeForce Experience because it helps explain where this issue is coming from. So whenever you download the NVIDIA driver, they ask you if you also want to download NVIDIA GeForce Experience. In fact, it's the default option. They will say, do you want to download GeForce Experience and it's pre-selected. Now, GeForce uh, Experience is their all-in-one software, but it is quite useful. It allows you to update your drivers more easily. You'll see notifications for the latest driver that's available and it ensures that your graphics card doesn't have an outdated driver. But it really is des designed for gamers. It allows you to record gameplay, allows you to stream games. It's got an overlay for audio and different things like that. Now, I wouldn't say that GeForce Experience has a great reputation online because certainly historically it's been quite buggy and it's caused more problems than it's been worth. So I've got GeForce Experience on my Alienware gaming laptop and it's actually been okay. It has saved me a little bit of time and it has run quite well with that. But that was not the case with my previous PC. So I've just recently built a new PC, as you know, but my previous PC had a 1080 Ti and 1080 Ti and an 8700K CPU. And I found out with GeForce Experience installed, a lot of games such as Call of Duty would crash. And even Activision themselves said, don't install GeForce Experience. Now, they've kind of worked with a lot of top games to resolve that so that issues like that don't arise. But I also found that just with GeForce Experience installed, I couldn't get as high frame rates. The latency was a little bit higher. You know, I was just using up CPU power and my computer wasn't powerful enough to run the, the newest games and also run GeForce Experience. So whenever it asked me, do you want to install the driver or and GeForce Experience, I just installed the driver. It just saved a lot of hassle. But I've got a 3090 now. It's an absolute beast and it handles GeForce Experience well. So I've actually been playing around with it. I've been playing around with Nevo, uh, GeForce Experience. I've been recording highlights, recording different clips, and it works really well, and I'm, I'm actually quite liking it. But here I am. I've circled around back to the issue. So if I show you this, I'll minimize this here. This is NVIDIA GeForce Experience, and this is basically where you, you know, handle the driver, driver for your graphics card, and it's where you kind of work things out. That shouldn't be there. That should be over there. So as you can see, you've got the games listed here, but you've also got drivers, right? And this is where you can, you know, change your driver and reinstall the driver and different things. And there's options to, you know, set things up automatically. You can see like the overlay tells you when the new update is available. All that's good. It does work quite well. And I, I am happy with this. And certainly with the new computer, it works well. But the problem is NVIDIA now give you two drivers. So you've got the game ready driver and the studio driver. Now the problem that I've got is that when I've got the game driver installed, I can't use my video editor. I can't use DaVinci Resolve. I will be editing a video, everything will shoot up to 100% and then it crashes. It is completely unusable when this game ready driver is installed. I just can't, I can't edit my YouTube videos and then play a game with this. I can only play a game. So the option is select studio driver. And as you can see, it's more for creative people. It's for video editing apps. It's for DaVinci Resolve and all that. Makes sense. Optimize the graphics card for video editing. It makes sense. But no surprises here what happens. Well, what happens is that when I install the studio driver, the GeForce experience doesn't work as well. It's not recording highlights correctly. It's not doing things well. And it's crashing my game as well. It's crashing Call of Duty and it's crashing a few other games that I've got doesn't happen all the time, but it's certainly not stable. So I'm in this situation now where when I'm editing a video, which I will be doing directly after this, I will need to switch to the studio driver. So you can see that I've got the game driver on just now. 
but I will need to switch to the studio driver in order to edit this video. And then if I want to play Call of Duty with friends, I will need to download and install the game ready, uh, game ready driver here. I'll need to install it again. Now, the frustrating thing about this for me is that NVIDIA doesn't save your installation files and it doesn't use them again. Every time I switch, and I could be switching four or five times a day, you know, theoretically, if I'm editing a video, playing a game, ed editing a video, etc., it just continually downloads like 600, 700 megabytes for the driver. Despite the fact it's been downloaded, it downloads it again, and then downloads it again, and then downloads it again. You could be like gigabytes of drivers on a daily basis. It's a lot over time, and it's weird the way that they've got it set up. Now, I'm kind of frustrated by this whole experience because I do understand why NVIDIA have done this. You know, one size doesn't fit all, and it does make sense for them to do a driver that's optimized for games and then do another driver that's optimized for video editing. The problem that I have is that I would like something to be in the middle, something that works well for both. I'm happy to lose a few frames per second, you know, with a, a standard normal graphics card driver if it means that I can do video editing and I can game at the same time. But the way that it's set up just now is that the studio driver and the game driver, they're becoming so far apart from each other that they're, in uh, they're not compatible with each other. You just simply can't edit your video and then go play games. So you're basically making your graphics card specific to one task. And I would prefer my graphics card to be general usage, to be great for everything. So it's a little bit annoying. I would prefer a normal driver, a regular driver, but the way that it is just now, I need to, on a daily basis, continually switch between the studio driver and the game re uh, ready driver, simply because I like to play games on the PC that I also like to video edit which, of course, I'm not going to buy a 3090 and not play games with it, and I did buy it for video editing. So, very frustrating. I really don't have an answer to this at this moment. I can't think of any workaround to this. Um, yeah. So, it's weird because, as I said, I wasn't a big fan of NVIDIA GeForce Experience before, but um, for whatever... Oh, it's because I've minimized that. Uh, I've not been a fan of uh, GeForce Experience in the past, but I'm actually enjoying it now, and just when I'm starting to enjoy it, I can't use it. So I need to keep switching between them. It's very frustrating. What I'd like to see NVIDIA do in the future is perhaps have something that is maybe in the middle, that is maybe not optimal for, for one or the other, just a general usage driver. But the alternative to that for me would be just make it easier to switch drivers. I shouldn't have to, you know, download the files again, 600 megabytes of files again, and I shouldn't have to spend five minutes every time to switch drivers. It has to be easier than this. It's just very, very annoying. I'd like to hear from you guys, though. I'd like to hear if any of you guys have tackled this. If you do YouTube videos, if you edit videos online, you're probably aware of this already. If you don't, you maybe didn't know that this existed, but it is frustrating that one driver you know, the game driver stops me from editing videos. It just completely stops the application from working. And the video editing application is crashing games, the, the video editing uh, driver. So very annoying. Well, over to you guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And until next time, take care.